I've had a lot of questions about what a master bladesmith is. Uh, people see on my knives and, and on some of our marketing and whatnot uh, that I'm a master bladesmith. And, and what does that mean? Uh, a master bladesmith is a knife maker who's gone through a series of testing uh, sanctioned from the American Bladesmith Society. Uh, has gone through quite a few different years and steps to get to a, a certain level uh, where they're deemed a master bladesmith. And I'm gonna kind of run through that on this video of, of what a master bladesmith is. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say though is not every knife uh, maker that's out there that's not a master bladesmith um, isn't necessarily a great maker. There's a lot of really great knife makers out there uh, who have just not chosen to take the master bladesmith test. Uh, so just because you're a master bladesmith doesn't mean that there's not other knife makers out there that are better than you. Um, and, and to me, it's a lot like attaining a master's degree from college. Uh, when you graduate college with that master's degree, to me, that only just means you're ready to learn and you're ready to gain experience and, and become maybe top of your craft or your industry, you know, years or decades, maybe even down the road. Same thing with a master bladesmith. As soon as you're done taking that test, to me, you've just proven that you're at a really high level of making knives, but you still have a lot to learn. And that's definitely the case uh, for me. The American Bladesmith Society is an organization that was originally intended to preserve and promote the art of the forged blade. It was founded in the 70s. Uh, it's going strong today all over the world. Uh, and it's really an organization that's just dedicated to those who forge knives. Um, it's not made for a stock removal maker, though some of those people like to be a, a member just because it's a good thing to support. But the American Bladesmith Society is really all about forged blades. Why would you join the American Bladesmith Society? The first thing I'd say is networking. Networking is a key component to almost any industry. And in the American Bladesmith Society, especially when you attend some shows, maybe go to some of their hammer-ins or their conferences, you gain access to masters and to other journeyman knife makers and people who have been around around a while who can teach you how to become a great maker. Uh, there's only so much you can learn from internet videos and uh, you know YouTube stuff, uh, which those are great tools that, that weren't around in the 90s when I started. Um, but there's nothing that can replace standing in a master's shop and working with him for two or three days in a row, gaining some of the small uh, nuance type techniques and, and tips that, that you just won't learn off of a video. The process for becoming a master bladesmith. The first thing you must do is you join the American Bladesmith Society. You have to become an apprentice, which basically just means you're a paid member. Uh, it's $60 a year. Um, it's about the best deal around. You just pay your dues once a year and now you're an apprentice. Being an apprentice means you're just learning how to make knives, whether that's from YouTube videos or in person at a guy's shop every single day. Uh, you must be an apprentice for at least three years before you're eligible to test for your journeyman smith rating. Once you hit that three year mark, you have to forge a blade and do a performance test with that blade. And that blade must be a 10 inch long blade or less. And that's just from the front of the handle to the tip of the blade, 15 inches overall in length and that blade must chop a one inch rope in half in one chop. You then take that same blade without sharpening and you must chop two two by fours in half in as many chops as you want to take as much time as you want. You can whittle it for all that matters. When you get through those two two by fours, that blade still has to be able to shave hair without having been resharpened. Uh, that's, that's really a test of a few things. The rope chop is a test of sharpness and you sharpen a blade. The two by four is really a test of that good balance between being hard enough to put up to abuse to the blade, but being flexible and tough enough to put up to hitting into a knot and not chipping the edge out. So you don't wanna bend the edge. They call that deformation. You don't wanna bend it when it's too soft, but if it's too hard, that edge will actually chip or flake away. It's also a test of how you grind the edge edge geometry. We talk a lot about that with Montana Knife Company. Edge geometry is key to a good blade uh, cutting well. You can heat treat the steel well, 
But if you do a really terrible job on your blade grind, it's gonna be hard to resharpen for the customer. And it's also gonna be hard to cut through a material like a rope that's just free swinging. After you do that, you have to bend that blade 90 degrees in a vise without breaking it. You put one third of the blade in a vise, which is usually right around three inches on these blades, and you bend that blade 90 degrees. The blade's allowed to crack less than half the uh, height of the blade, uh, though that's not ideal. Obviously, you want to have that blade bend 90 degrees without breaking it and come back. Um, a really well heat treated blade will actually bend that 90 degrees and come back almost straight um, with a little bit of degree maybe left bent in it. Once you've passed the performance part of the journeyman test or the mastersmith test, you must take your five knives to Atlanta and present them to the uh, to a master bladesmith panel of judges. Those, those judges will judge your five knives that you bring and they'll judge fit and finish, the workmanship, the blade grind, the design, everything that goes into making a knife. And to pass the journeyman level knife making um, test, uh, you have to make sure that your knives are made of a, of a professional quality. Uh, that can be a little bit subjective as to what someone would deem per, uh, professional. Uh, but in general, your knives don't have to be perfect, but they have to be very, very good. Uh, very little wrong with those knives. Once you pass that test, you are now a journeyman knife maker. And you are, you are given a stamp that you can actually stamp your blades with a JS. Um, and, and that's really something that uh, that you know, you, you can call yourself a professional knife maker at that point. Once you've passed the journeyman test, you're now eligible to test for your master smith. However, you have to be a journeyman for at least two years. Once you reach that eligibility, you have to go through the performance portion of the test again, uh, where you chop the rope and you chop the two by fours and you bend the blade. The difference is this time you have to do it with a Damascus blade that has to have been at least 300 layers or more of Damascus that you personally forged. Again, you go through that performance part under the eye of a master smith in his shop or at your shop. And once you've passed that, you go back to the Atlanta Blade Show where you're gonna test the workmanship part of your, of your knives. Again, for the master smith test, you have to present five knives to the panel of master smith judges and they will judge fit and finish again. The difference this time is, is there's one particular knife that you have to make called a Quillian Dagger. A Quillian Dagger is a double-edged knife uh, in the typical dagger that everybody kind of knows, uh, but the Quillian portion refers to the guard area. It also has to be a fluted and wire-wrapped handle, which basically means you have to carve the, the wood or the ivory, whatever you've put on that knife, and you have to wrap it in sterling silver rope wire. Uh, that's a very difficult knife to make. It, re it requires the maker to follow an exact plan. It requires the maker to be very good at grinding and look for the little tiny nuanced things that can go wrong with a, with a knife that's perfectly symmetrical. A lot of people can make one half of a knife perfectly, but can they make the second half exactly the same as the first half? It's very difficult to do. Uh, the rest of your knives, um, are really entirely up to your uh, to your own eye, to your own design. Uh, there's a few small rules and requirements with some of that stuff that uh, that if you're interested in testing, you can find on the American Bladesmith Society website. Um, but what I would say with that test is your knives basically have to be perfect. It's a very high standard, very tough to achieve. Um, about 110, 120 people have actually gotten through that process in the world. Uh, it's very difficult. I think when I went through, I was about number 80, uh, right around there in the world, and that was in the year 2000. Um, and so that's the Master Smith Blade. Uh, that's the Master Bladesmith Test. Uh, join the American Bladesmith Society. It's a very good organization. Uh, they have a forum. There's a lot of good information on their website, and that also their website is a great place to find. Uh, contact information for other master bladesmiths, journeyman smiths, and other people in your area. So if you live in Ohio or in Hawaii or in Washington, you can go to that website and you can find people that are near you. You might be able to pay for lessons, spend a little time in their shop. 
So becoming a master bladesmith has been an amazing thing for my career. It's definitely been an achievement that's, that's helped me build my company and help, help with credibility behind what I do. I don't necessarily think that that's the be all end all point in your knife making career. In fact, I think becoming a master smith is just the very beginning of learning. I know I'm a way better knife maker than I was when I passed that test. I think it's definitely been an, a, a major advantage and, and something that's given me credibility to move into the Montana Knife Company portion of my career. Um, becoming a master bladesmith, being, being uh, an apprentice and going through the journeyman and constantly striving to make better knives, learn the heat treating, learn about edge geometry, ergonomics and a handle. That all leads to where we are today with Montana Knife Company and why I feel like our knives really are better than a lot of the knives that are being produced in a, in a manufacturing factory type uh, situation around the country or the world. Um, our knives are backed by experience. Uh, the fact that I'm a hunter, I get out, I actually use our knives. I understand what a knife should feel like in the field. And the fact that I'm an actual master bladesmith behind the scenes, I think that really helps in design, understanding steel selection, handle material selection, edge geometry, which I talk about a lot. You almost never hear that in advertising from other companies. You hear about how hard, what Rockwell the steel is, or what kind of fancy stainless steel they're using, but you don't hear them talk about the why behind an edge, edge geometry, the weight in the knife, the handle material, and the ergonomics of it when you're actually using it in the field. So I think the master bladesmith thing has been something that really gives our company some credibility, a credibility that you don't see other companies really have. We're not boardroom, uh, you know, corporate owners. I'm a knife maker and I own a knife company. So I think that definitely sets us apart from other brands.